Section 1, yeah, a lot of basic terms, concepts, design elements, um, design considerations. Uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of time here, in fact. Okay, Just be prepared. And then we'll be spending also some time in Chapter 2.2. This is uh, one of the key applications uh, supporting actually our everyday life. That is the World Wide Web. And the application layer protocol that's... Uh, keeping the web running is this, HTTP. Now, I'm going to insert uh, one more protocol which is not touched down in textbook called the FTP, as that uh, some of us are still using it a lot. Okay, That is mainly a protocol to support file transfer, uh, such as uh, what's implemented in FileZilla. Okay, and the secure version of it is called the secure FTP. 2.3, we'll be learning all these protocols to support email. Okay. So many of us uh, write emails a lot. I guess uh, the younger ones are no longer writing emails, but uh, many of us, especially the professional people, are still using a lot of emails. It's very good to know uh, how email system operates. And then DNS, I try to explain extensively up there. It's a huge huge architecture behind uh, the DNS servers. You do want to know how the DNS servers are interconnected. Uh, that's going to help you design applications as well, even though it sounds like a sort of a core services to support internet operation. Not exactly an application. And then 2.5, uh, you will see how P2P networks can be designed, how P2P services can be designed. We'll also see a couple examples. One of them is called the BitTorrent. So that is the major P2P services that's before uh, Bitcoin. Uh, We're going to see uh, what's behind BitTorrent's uh, operation. We'll also describe a bit more of another P2P application called Skype. And then we'll also be spending quite a bit time here in 2.6 as many of us are using uh, streaming services over the internet extensively such as YouTube such as what you're doing now uh, watching the online lecture all right so we'll be doing video streaming uh, and content distribution network is there to support video streaming um, but let me just say that although um, we say that Content Distribution Network is there to support video streaming, but most of these streaming services are operating based on the client-server model, just to clarify. It's not like that the Content Distribution Network is an architecture itself. And then briefly in 2.7, we're going to introduce the concept of socket programming, um, but much of this I'm going to just duplicate and repeat uh, again and again in PA 3 and 4, where we'll begin to do socket programming using Go. All right? But um, in chapter 2.7 and 2.8, you will see uh, the goal of the textbook author is so that um, we take you through how one implements a web server uh, using the network socket. Um, so one could do this using other programming languages, not only the Go land, uh, such as Python, uh, such as Java. Okay, so Golan, I try to justify why we use this language at the you know beginning of the semester. Now, let's move on. Before we talk about the concepts, let's talk about these applications so that you get a better idea. I keep saying network application, network applications. What are these network applications? Well, first of all, Look at this, email. Um, some of you have uh, emailed me before. So those uh, email clients that you're using to type up your emails, yeah, this, uh, that is part of the email services, part of the email application. And uh, going to the course page, for example, then you'll be using the web service. Text messaging, yeah, some of you guys might be now typing live on the live chat. That is a text messaging service. Now, some of you have already messaged me um, uh, through the Messenger, okay, the Facebook's Messenger. 
That is also a text messaging services. For many of the domestic students, you guys are probably lining each other a lot. So line is one of the most popular text messaging app uh, in Taiwan. Remote locking. Yeah, mm, let's see. Have you done this before? Oh, yes, you did. Um, for PA1, PA2, I think you've tried it out already, right? Doing SSH. Yeah, SSH belongs to also this category called the remote locking. Uh, it's just that the SSH is more a secure remote, uh, remote locking. P2P Fashion, if you have experienced uh, using BitTorrent before, then you will see what I'm saying here. A peer-to-peer -peer based file sharing system. Um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is P2P alright, but uh, it's not exactly file sharing, but it's more directory sharing, uh, content sharing. Okay, so yeah, you can think of P2P file sharing a bit more generally as P2P content sharing. Okay. So those are very common. Uh, the next few, it really depends on your habit. Uh, you might use some of these more than we do, uh, but you might also use uh, these less than we do. So first, I see that uh, I think some of you uses these more, the games. The mobile games or the regular online games you play on the desktop, those are multi-user network games. So some of the architecture of these multi-user games could be quite complicated and transmission of the game data can also be uh, a bit hard to do. Right? Next, uh, YouTube, yeah, streaming stored video. So streaming services, there is a more official name, streaming stored video. And then over this side, uh, right side of the side, you see, these are for the teleconferencing. So voice over Skype is one of the teleconferencing means. In fact, in Skype, you can also do video conferencing. Nowadays, we have Zoom. Uh, that's another choice that's popular. Uh, Google Hangout, some of you might still be using it. Uh, I think there are more and more rising these days uh, with the virus situation getting worse. So the university is advising us to use this system called the U system. Well, maybe eventually we'll give it a try, but for now, just so that you know, U is also one of these teleconferencing services. Now, well, there's video, there's audio, but they are not quite streaming stored video we were talking about here because these audio video are actually very interactive live not quite like what we're doing here we are actually doing it um semi live having 10 to 20 seconds delay it's barely live sorry it's barely real uh, real time and then social network for this course sorry um, you have to use facebook a lot um, well, Facebook is quite reliable, although that um, it has less regard about our privacy. Um, hopefully, you don't mind too much uh, being on Facebook just for the semester. All right. So social networking, Facebook. Um, I do know that uh, many of you uh, are on IG. All right. So I've been uh, asked a lot to, you know, start my IG account, but I'm still resisting it. All right. Uh, just to tell you, uh, as a fact, Polly is not a very social person. Um, from time to time, I really like to be alone. I don't know about you. Some of you might be as well. It's actually really nice if you think about it. Give it a try. And then searching. Uh, I don't have to say too much about this. Yeah, Google, um, Baidu. Um, yeah, there are just so many of them. Okay, so searching engines. And last, cloud computing. Hmm, well, some people actually consider P2P uh, as a cloud computing services. Uh, and some also consider 
uh, streaming services over here, for example, Netflix, YouTube, also a cloud computing service. Um, because it's essentially a number of machines forming a cloud. So it's not quite entirely the internet, but it's a, you know, a subset of the internet there supporting the operation of a service. And that is not quite like the client service model. Hey, there's one system being client and another system being server. And there seems to be only two entities involving the service. So cloud computing in a very general uh, term, that means there's quite a bit of um, nodes involved, quite a bit of end systems involved, and they're forming this cloud. But these days, um, when people talk about uh, cloud computing, they might mean more specifically uh, Amazon's AWS service okay, or Microsoft's uh, Azure service. Yeah, so these are the cloud computing services. So these companies allow us to subscribe so that we get to operate uh, multiple machines that are physically across the world. So you could kind of uh, build your systems build your content distribution network in a way, all right? So yeah, cloud computing, it's a term that's a bit fuzzy and sometimes general, sometimes more specific pointing to these cloud computing services. Well, they do charge people though, okay? Right, so going through these examples, so just that you have a good context, a, a good context of what we're gonna talk about, okay? Now, implementing these uh, applications. To create such uh, a network application, you do need to write programs, all right? So these programs will all be running on the end systems. Okay. So let me uh, bring up the animation. So end systems here, here, and here. Okay. And they'll be communicating over the network like this, end to end, end system to end system. All right, so um, for example, this guy here could be the web server and this guy here could be using Safari uh, to look up the course page. And there's communication going through the internet such that the web request goes to the server and web server here replies with the course page. Right, so you do have the web server software here running on the physical machine over here. And then you do have a Safari, the web browser software uh, that's implemented and running here on the end system. Okay, so programs are distributed in fact in a network application. And there's not gonna be need to write a software so that it runs in the internet core. So what are the internet cores? Um, this is the internet core. And there's not gonna be any part of the software that involves operation of an application layer protocol that's gonna go in here. This is actually a very nice consideration when we're designing how uh, to build network application because then we involve very little entities that we need to change in case we want to evolve or we want to update our application. Okay, so the core devices do not run the user applications. Therefore, when we want to make rapid changes, we don't have to change all the codes that's running here. So that will require every router here uh, to make changes. Okay, so if we want to make changes on the apps, Designing it this way, having all the software running on the end systems, we just need to update the end systems. Nice and independent. And that takes us to the first quiz.